Oh boy, do I have an awesome episode planned for you guys today, okay? This is gonna be my favorite episode of Setup Wars by far. I'm dedicating this episode to white themed setups. I know, I know, I don't know why I've never done this before, believe it or not, but well, hallelujah, we're finally doing it. A lot of people, myself included, love the color scheme so much uh, because it's really easy on the eyes and it's color neutral so you can change it up to any color scheme you want so if you guys are watching this video and you have a badass white theme setup you want to show off on setup or then god damn it toss in a submission right now okay because i want to do more of these uh but yeah with that said sit back and relax because you know what time it is You know, being a content creator isn't easy. You can create an awesome video, but if the editing is whack, then it's not really gonna reach an audience. I'm sure you guys have noticed the editing on the channel has improved slightly, and that's because I've been using Storyblocks, who also happens to sponsor today's video. With Storyblocks, I'm able to spice up my videos without spending any extra time, money, or resources. I'm able to do this using their ever-growing library of over 1 million assets. We're talking really cool 4K video backgrounds to capture my audience's attention, to After Effects and Premiere Pro templates, images, sound effects, and even music, which you are hearing right now in the background. With their unlimited all access plan, you get unlimited downloads from their library. And the cool part about all this is that all the assets are royalty free, so you can use your downloaded content anywhere for commercial and personal use. If you really wanna take your content creation seriously and reach a wider audience, then I definitely recommend checking out Storyblocks by using my link down below. They have subscriptions for every budget so you can choose a plan that works for you. What a beautiful setup we are starting off the show with. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Dan from the UK and his white on black gaming setup. He actually listed gamer as his occupation, so we can safely assume he makes money from this setup. Start off, I gotta say, I do like the presentation for the most part. You know, we got those black hexagon panels that adds a nice layer of contrast in the back, but I can't help but feel like the wallpapers are interfering in a way. If only the colors were reversed, I think then you would have achieved that perfect contrast. Nonetheless, this still looks spectacular. We got dual displays hooked up to an office desk with a 240Hz Aura's monitor as the main and a 1440p monitor in vertical as the secondary. You gotta give some credit to Dan for staying so freaking consistent to the white on black theme. You can easily tell the difference between the ones who are fully dedicated and the ones who aren't. The ones who are, you can easily tell by looking at the less important pieces of gear, like the monitor mount, for example, or the accessories on the desk. But another big giveaway is the modding and custom work that is done to the setup like skinning of the bezels. For peripherals, he's rocking a Ducky 1-2 Mini SF with custom lubed speed silvers and a wireless ultra custom mouse from Ponage. I gotta point out that big brain cable management from the keyboard real quick, okay? This is such a smart alternative of passing the cable across the desk. So he basically used a few white cable clips to curve the cable back towards the edge and underneath the desk. Very, very impressive. For audio, he's rocking a pair of Mackie CR3 speakers, but he prefers gaming on the Corsair Virtuosos, which are hanging from the side of the desk. And of course, we can't forget about the mic setup as well, which he also painted in white. I love this guy's attention to detail. Aside from the color scheme, symmetry also appears to be very important to Dan, and so does the cable management. I do have to say though, using masking tape to hide the cables probably wouldn't have been my first choice, but oddly enough, it seems to work really well in your situation. Since the tape is extremely flat and low profile, it blends in a lot easier with the wall, especially after painting it the same color. Like you can barely even see it, so I think you're onto something here. And of course, can't forget about the custom PC, which I've had my eye on the entire time. That is one hell of a clean build, if I say so myself. Let's just take a few seconds to enjoy these high quality pictures that Dan has blessed our eyeballs with.
Ryzen 7 5800X with an ASUS Strix RTX 3080 in white. I mean, what more can you ask for? The PC is also hooked up to his 4K TV on the opposite side of the room so that he can still game on the PC from bed using his PS5 controller. Absolutely stunning setup to start off the show. Thank you, Dan, for the amazing high quality pictures and also for sharing this with us all. Shifting gears a bit, let's take a look at a more simple and humble white themed setup. So Matt is a cryptocurrency trader from the Philippines who built this setup for the purpose of gaming, watching movies and trading. It took him only six months to build, so apparently he's doing something right in the crypto world. The desk was custom made by him and it was designed specifically to fit the small space next to his bed while offering cable management support in the back. To start off, we do have a single 32 inch Odyssey G7 monitor that he does everything on, but due to the size and limited desk space, it is blocking off both of his audio engine speakers. For peripherals, he's using the G913 TKL wireless that's paired beautifully with the Viper Ultimate mouse. Now, one thing that kind of bothers me is how close the keyboard and mouse is to the edge of the desk. This means he doesn't have any extra space to rest his arms while typing. And this is because the monitor is so up close to him, which is another problem, especially considering the size. The best possible solution for this would be to raise the monitor up and above the speakers and push it to the back to open up more desk space. This simple solution would fix two of the problems that you currently have. Aside from the speakers, he does switch over to the G733 headset while he games on his decked out gaming PC, featuring the Ryzen 9 5900X and another ASUS RTX 3080 in white. I wonder how many of these we will see in today's video. Make sure you guys post your guesses in the comment section below. Another very clean white themed setup, but with some questionable choices. Either way, thank you, Matt, for sharing this with us. Here's a very interesting setup by Sam from Malaysia. He's a banker who decided to build a setup for his wife and himself, and get this, he uses the setup for gaming while the wife uses it for 3D rendering. How cute. The first thing I'm sure we all noticed is the size of the custom desk. Well, the depth of the desk really. It is so deep where it kind of feels like a couch gaming setup since he's sitting so far from the monitor. Naturally, with all that surface area, you got options on spacing out your gear. You know, we got a nice collection of Xbox controllers on the left, accompanied by several charging cables for convenience. And alongside the monitor, we have his audio gear, including the Edifier Lunar Eclipse speakers, which he painted in white since they don't have white versions available in their country. One thing I don't understand, however, is the second smaller display underneath the ultrawide that's showing the hardware info of the PC. I'm really curious if Sam is even able to see that small text from that distance. For peripherals, he is using the Corsair K70 keyboard and a Logitech G703 mouse. Now, Sam wanted to use a white extended mouse pad with RGB, but since there was no single pad that has both, he decided to buy two different ones and stack them. When it comes to cable management, I'm neither impressed or disappointed. I mean, if you have a secret compartment to hide your cables, why bother managing them, right? What I am impressed with, however, is this insane water-cooled gaming PC. This right here is a unicorn, guys, okay? The first ever dual RTX 3090 water-cooled build on the show, and probably the last. It also has a Ryzen 9 5950X processor with 32 gigs of RAM and 16 total fans. A little overkill for Battlefield 5 and Forza if you ask me, but hey, who doesn't love an overkill system? Such a refreshing setup. Thank you, Sam, for blessing our eyes today with this. We've seen our fair share of Stormtrooper setups on the show, but this one hands down takes the crown. He didn't list his name, but I did find out that it took him around a year to complete and everything in this room cost over 100,000 US dollars. Every single square inch of this game room stays true to the white on black Stormtrooper theme and there are multiple setups in here. We got two fully equipped high-end PC battle stations adjacent to each other, an epic entertainment area complete with surround sound and a smaller console gaming area right behind it. All right, let's backtrack a little bit and start with the main battle station featuring a custom wall mounted desk that was made out of a wooden door, which he also painted in white gloss. Above that, we got dual stacked ultra wide monitors, a 49 inch G9 Odyssey on the bottom and a 35 inch ultra wide from Asus up top, both mounted nicely against the wall. But then there is a third monitor that he mounted above his PC on the left side. My guess is that he needed a third monitor for a specific task and didn't want to ruin the aesthetic of his setup by including it in here. 
Even though there is so much going on in this room, he did keep the setups very minimal with only the essentials, like a keyboard and a couple of mice. Now for audio, he's got a ton of speakers, and I mean a ton of speakers everywhere in this entire room. But he didn't list any of them for some reason in the notes, probably because there are so many to list. Apart from the bookshelf speakers, he does have two additional speakers underneath the desk and a sub in the center. Down here is also where he stores both of his last-gen consoles, the PS4 and the Xbox One. I think it was a pretty smart idea to use a couple of shelves to store these down here instead of just kind of leaving it on the floor. The peasant consoles belong down there while the PS5 gets its very own pedestal right between both setups. Although I'm not sure which setup this is currently plugged into. There are a total of four custom PCs in this room, by the way. The PC powering the first setup is a Blingnout system featuring the Ryzen 9 5950X and two RTX 2070 Supers in SLI. Moving over to the secondary setup, it appears to have dual PCs. He didn't mention the reason why, but I guess it's safe to assume this is the main setup that's also used for streaming. The PC on the left is the fastest PC in the room with a 10900K and a white ROG Strix 3090, while the other one has a 10600K with dual GTX 770s in SLI. Not much of a streaming PC if that's the case, so I'm now really curious what all these PCs are for. See guys, this is why I want you to fill out the notes completely. This guy left so many sections in the notepad blank, it's really hard to understand the purpose of everything. The second setup is also rocking dual ultrawides, a 49 inch on the bottom and another 35 inch up top. My guy has a thing for ultrawides it appears, but I do like each setup has a slight variation. This one is using different speakers and he added lightsabers on the wall instead of masks. Moving back into the entertainment den is where he kicks back and watches movies and games on some of his older generation consoles. It kind of feels like we're constantly going back in time from every setup. You know, we started with the PS5, then we moved down to the PS4, and now I'm seeing a PS3 with an Xbox 360. I'm starting to believe that these are just here for decoration and not for actual use. So the entertainment setup is powered by the fourth and final HTPC, which has its very own dedicated shrine with a keyboard and mouse and some more Star Wars collectibles. This man's determination is admirable. Don't let the HTPC name fool you. This thing is packing quite the performance with a 10700K and an ROG Strix 3070 in white. This guy must have white GPUs growing on a tree or something. Do we even have to mention the extra console gaming area or are you guys good? My best guess is that this area is used to play co-op games with whoever is on the other entertainment area, but at this point I wouldn't be surprised if this was built just for display. This guy has very deep pockets and a mountain of determination when it comes to a specific theme. Nonetheless, this was an absolutely jaw-dropping man cave, my guy. Thank you for sharing this with us. So we've been looking at only adult setups this entire time. Let's change it up and take a look at how a teen does it. So this is Lucien's gaming and productivity setup from Switzerland. You can already tell how dedicated he is to the color scheme. So much that he went with white Alienware monitors. But my guy Lucien is a baller because he's rocking not only one, but two 240 Hertz monitors. For peripherals, he's rocking the Huntsman Mini in Mercury White and a Model D, but check out the cable management here, guys. Okay, he took advantage of the monitor stand to route all the cables from the keyboard, mouse, and the mouse pad so naturally like it's a part of the setup. Now that makes sense why he didn't mount the monitors to the desk. The setup doesn't have any speakers, so he relies on the Corsair HS50s for all of his audio needs. However, he does want to upgrade to a white headset so it better matches the setup's colors. Of course, being all white allows him to change it up to anything he wants, but what's cool about the setup is the way he synced most of the lights together with his music. That's pretty badass. No complaints when it comes to cable management. My guy has all the cables on lockdown with a bunch of raceways and cable clips. Nice work, my guy. And finally, his custom PC inside the O11 Dynamic. It's a very balanced system with a Ryzen 5 5600X and the Vision RTX 3070 from Gigabyte. The setup definitely has all the gear. It's just missing a few more personal touches to make it your very own. Either way, thank you, Lucien, for sharing this with us. As a reminder, you guys can always pick up a cheap Windows CD key for less than $15. Just click on my link below and use the code TS20 for an extra 20% off. Once you get your CD key, just visit the activation settings in Windows and change your product key. It's that simple. 
And that will do it for today. As always, make sure you guys comment below and let me know which of these setups was your absolute favorite. It's gonna be a very difficult vote indeed, but let me know which of these was your absolute favorite and maybe a sentence or two on why. If you guys enjoyed the episode and wanna see more white edition of Setup Wars, that sounds really wrong. Uh, white themed setups of Setup Wars, let me know by dropping a like. And if you guys are new here, consider subscribing because I do host Setup Wars every single Monday. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you very soon in the next one. My hot cocoa almost spilled doing that. But yeah, I'll see you guys very soon.